This is episode five, and it feels like it should already be over. Hello everybody, my name is Blue, and today I took a look at episode five, or level five, of Netogay titled, I Thought Reincarnating Would Give Me a Big Chance. This episode so far showcases the strong points of this series. It shows that this show is very funny, very good with its humor, but can also be very sweet. And I think that's like the essence of this type of show, this genre of romantic comedies. And it does it really, really well. And they didn't do what I thought they were going to do. I thought they were going to start this episode because they picked up right where I left off in the last one with the new girl on the game hugging... Um, Rusian's arm, and I thought they were going, and they made it sad at the end because it like zoomed in on uh, Akko's face and played some sad music. So I thought they'd start this episode and make it a comedy moment where she like attacks the girl or something. No, they didn't do that. They continued the sad moment, and that was actually I think a lot better. I think it's a lot more effective because we get to see that she's not just. I'm gonna go crazy and attack. No, she she can get hurt by things. So the next day at club, Akko decides to say, hey, why don't we play a different game tonight? Because there's uh, reasons. Obviously, she doesn't want to play with the other girl. Um, and they start playing a first-person shooter. And this brought up a concept I'd love to see them do more of, is the idea of their fantasy selves in other video game genres because like I'd said in the first episode they showcased how the game doesn't look like it does when it's showing them all action and everything the anime version of the game is no the, the game's like a Diablo top-downish kind of like chibi style game but when they're playing it it shows it as if it's like a huge action anime and I love that they carried that into a first-person shooter environment, too. So I'd love to see them do that with a lot of other genres. And it turns out that Akko's really good at first-person shooters, so much so that she's, like, sniping everybody on the roof the next day at class. She's, like, talking about, like, the normies are everywhere. And she's, like, pretending like she's got a sniper scope in her hand and everything. And he's like, uh, no, stop doing that. You're going to get in trouble. But then Schwein's friend, the pink-haired girl, comes in and pretty much does the same thing she did in game that is the girl in game who was the newbie as I pretty much thought it, it's pretty obvious that was her and she kind of grabs onto his arm and everything and Akko panics and calls him stupid and runs out and they don't see her for a while logging into the game he talks to her and she says that she's going to reincarnate and it gets really serious because I think that's what they were going for but at least to me it sounded as if she was talking about dying and that's that's kind of crazy and that hits a little close to home for a few occasions and it's very, 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 very silly when it transitions that to her talking about reincarnation in the game, which we've already been, we already had established earlier, is when you reach max level, you can drop down to level one. It's a new game plus feature of this online game. She thinks that that is going to make her a different person, and just the the shift from what seemed like a suicide conversation to. I'm gonna level up to max level and just start New Game Plus was so jarring to me that I just kind of laughed. After that, she stops all chatting with them and cuts off her chat box pretty much from them. And the only way they could do anything is he says, "Look, I can I can handle this, but I can try to handle this, but you're gonna have to let me do this my way." And he skips school and goes to her house, and her mom. Oh dear God, her mom. Her mom looks like an older version of her, and is seemingly just as airheaded and is very, very okay with the idea that that he's he's her he's her daughter's husband. Because the first thing she says is Oh, you're the husband and it's so hilarious. She gives him the key to her daughter's bedroom and says, oh, look at the time, I gotta go to work, bye. And just says, you take care of her, because when I'm done, you're gonna have to be the one taking care of her. And he goes up there, and I I don't have any notes other than in all capital letters, I wrote, oh my god, with like 50 million exclamation points, because that was the funniest part of this entire series so far. He goes up there and he says, Look, I'm your husband, so I'm gonna open this door, and you better be ready. She's like, wait, no, don't come in! And he opens the door, and she's standing there in her underwear. He panics, slams the door, and goes, why are you in your underwear? And she says that, oh, I'm the kind of person who feels, like, more free at home, in my room and everything, so... And he's like, well, just, just change! Put something on or something! And she goes, okay, and then, like, a while later, she goes, okay, you can come in. And he opens the door, and she's sitting there... <laughs> 
naked. And the people doing this show need some sort of award for the perfect comedic timing that they presented in this, because he sees her, everything freezes for like a millisecond, the tiniest freeze, and then the door slams shut, and he is freaking out on the other side of the door. And she's saying, like, what are you doing? I thought that you were going to come in here and we were going to, yeah, you know. And he goes, that's not the kind of ready I meant. And this episode is killing me. It's so hilarious. But then it does do another shift into going into a more sweet moment. And he basically says, she's like, uh, are you here to take me back to school or tell me to come back to school? And he goes, no. Nah. You want to have some fun? And they just play the game all day. They just play the game in a room all day, and he helps her learn how to play the game really effectively. He's like, look, if you want to reincarnate in the game, then you're going to have to get good at this, and I can help you. So he's literally just helping her the entire day. And then when the club starts, they log on, and he goes, all right, uh, Nekohime-san, I'm quitting school. And everyone's like, what? What do, you, what do you mean you're quitting school? And it's up to Akko to say, you can't do that. And he goes, why? You're, you're quitting school. If it's okay for you, why isn't it okay for me? And she basically says, well, because you, you met all these people in the club. You, you have friends now and everything, and you, you don't want to not see them, do you? And he basically turns it on her and says, you want all that stuff to happen to you? And it's a really touching moment because he does, he does eventually convince her to come back to school. And he basically says, like, Look, if real life ever gets too hard, just let me know and we can go play the game together and just have fun. And then at the end of the episode, it's blatantly thrown out there that they are boyfriend and girlfriend. Episode 5, and this feels like the finale of a series. I can't wait to see what goes on from here because they've reached a point that most comedic romances don't reach until the very end of the series and I'm so happy because I love the idea of seeing what happens next. So I'll be back with the next episode next week and tomorrow I'm gonna be doing Kagewani's next episode. I also have a couple videos going up right now. I have my Let's Read of Higurashi no Nakakoro ni Chapter 2 Watanagashi and me and my friends are playing Soma where we feel like horrible people and we're doing horrible things so it's deserved. Thank you all for watching and I will see you guys all in the next episode so until then everybody Peace out.